Um, I got a phone call um, earlier this week from a woman I know, Jackie Cumberbatch, who used to be head ranger at Benny Hee. Now, last time Jackie and I met, we were discussing the fact that her husband, John, lives with Lewy body dementia. It's the second most common form of Alzheimer's. Now, prior to his diagnosis, they were a real outdoor couple. They spent a lot of time outdoors, the vast majority of the time outdoors, and obviously that's extremely difficult nowadays because of John's condition. She told me uh, that John currently has an exhibition on at Moni Mascart Gallery and asked, did I fancy coming along to see it? The lovely folk so said, yes, straight away and what have you. And what followed, I think, was a really fascinating insight into what is an extremely difficult condition. Sometimes you will see, if you walk down Union Street in Aberdeen, you'll see that, and the chances are that the person at the end of it has got dementia because they've got their head down and they're not, they're not really communicating with anyone, even with their own family. It's, a, it's almost like an embarrassment because you've got the, because you've got the, the cold. And... We need to be able to do something. You can't just go, geez, money, geez, money. It's not like that. And uh, I came up with this. Well, myself and my friend, the Margaret Bildy, who's through the house here, I went to Margaret and I asked her if I could, could you teach me to paint. And she said, yeah, of course you can. I'll do that. Hang on a second. So you, you weren't a painter before. No. You got the Louis body dementia diagnosis and then you decided to learn to paint yeah and you, you have this exhibition here now we have this exhibition here now yes we felt that the, all the proceeds should go to Alzheimer's Scotland and do mm -hmm. and uh, without government the way it's quite a healthy sum. Jackie how have your lives changed post-diagnosis? A lot, really. I mean, I was a lot in denial uh, for a long time, you know, because obviously John's my partner and we discuss things, uh, we're an equal relationship, and then suddenly I'm a person who was outdoors, you know, working for Forestry and Land Scotland and realised that my husband was no longer the same man, so I had to learn to not wander in the woods and suddenly face up to the reality that my husband needed care, basically. Yeah, and it's been hard, and... I think this exhibition has made me realise that John's got a voice and I'd lost that voice and that understanding. So the art is a, a, a John way of expressing himself, which he always has because John's a community artist, has done drama and he was a swimming teacher and things like that, so he's done a lot in the community. You were involved in Inverary Community Council, um, a coach at uh, Geary Swimming. So, you know, you, ha you had a, a role in, in society and then suddenly Louis Body takes that away from you and he took... John, my John away, Louis is, we have, we have this joke, don't we, that uh, Louis is this horrible person and uh, John is this lovely person. But, um, so, yeah, it's, it's learning to address that. And um, for me, John has also polio, which he coped with as a young person. That was never an issue, but obviously now it does affect, Lou body affects mobility and that sort of idea. So when I can't cope with John being angry, frustrated, you know, I can go for a walk. John can't, he's stuck at home uh, and the natural environment gives me, like, the spirit to carry on um, and this art exhibition has made me you know working with Margaret and John in this quiet environment in Money Musk able to express himself through painting and they really are amazing names haven't you you've got uh, you know uh, Zeppelin Jobby um, <laughs> uh, you know and, and fun you know art's about having fun and we will show you obviously we'll, after we've had this chat we'll we'll show Mark the the work and the community, we, we, we've lived in, uh, you know, the Inverurie. I've lived in, well, sort of in the shadow of Ben Hee, I suppose, for um, 30 years, or more than 30 years, and we moved to Money Musk a year and a half ago. People have seen John on his scooter and I'm pushing the wheelchair. I've got a loud English voice and I go, oh, hello, blah, 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 blah. But nobody knew who John was, even though Inverurie did know who John was. And it's been beautiful. Uh, the um, uh, Money Musk community have been very welcoming to us both. And they've realised that John's got a voice through his painting and, and that, that's, it's just brilliant, that. What do you choose to paint? I mean, I know some of it is abstract, but some of it is you know, things like landscapes. Oh, we've got one of the most beautiful landscapes in the world on our doorstep, so it's... Most of the time, the, the paint chooses you. 
it's interesting, we went away, Jenny, our daughter, um, lives in Las Vegas, and it was interesting, Margaret was commenting, wasn't she, when she came back from yeah. Las Vegas, it was the reds and the yellows and the dryness, and straight away John's work was reflected in that, so although it's not necessarily a landscape as we recognise it, it's more the expression of it, the gut feeling of it. You're hearing that raw motion of red, dry and desert. I mean, you'll see, obviously... With the pictures, and that's what's lovely about having you know the likes of the studio here, where there's a collective of different artists. You know, they've supported John, and obviously it's Margaret who is with working with John on a Friday of a one-to-one -one basis. That it, we've, that that's come through. You know, that 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 sort of joy of art, really. Is the painting now to an extent a way that you can share? You know, your love of the outdoors. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing John's spirit, and he, like I say, it's looking at things. You know. Uh, John has this thing. I used to go when I worked for Forest and Land Scotland and, and the Baileys. I used to spend hours, you know, and I'd say to John, Oh, I'll be back at five, and then it used to be eight. Now, John, now it's I have to be back, you know, it's usually about an hour. So I have a regular walk around Money Musk or other walks, or I can go for an, a, one to two hours. And because it's, I'm not having, I don't want to zoom all around, I'm getting to look at colours a bit better. So you, through John's eyes, it's making me realise that actually you don't need to go miles and miles away. You can go on a regular walk and you can see things, you know, the colours, the wildlife, the bees, the butterflies, the change in the wind, the direction, you know, the spirit's there. Are you with me? It's all there. And so for me, I get that. Yeah, I can see where he's coming from. Are you with me? So, like, his art is interpreting that. I'm, I'm getting the joy, but actually really seeing it. John can't because he's not mobile. He's actually... He, yeah, seeing that, does that make sense? It, it, it makes a lot of sense, and I wonder if, you know, despite the fact you're not mobile, despite the fact that you know, you're using a wheelchair these days, are you seeing better than you did? Uh, not physically, but yes. Your mental health becomes the most important thing in your life. So to, to, to do that, you have to bring in other things within your, within your own body that that will give you a more decent life than the one you may have get. Because what we suffer from, and there's a lot of people, is a terrible, terrible thing. How would you describe it? The devil came into my life, and I can't get rid of him. And how did that manifest itself? What, what has changed since your diagnosis? Everything. Everything. My whole life has changed. I was driving down Union Street and I suddenly lost consciousness in the middle of Union Street. That was the opening gambit. And I took it up to the, to the hospital and got it got diagnosed. When we were at home, you saw things. So for me, yeah. you know, during lockdown, you know, I was working from home uh, and John said, oh, keep the lights on. Or well, what's that stick? Why yeah. is those stick men moving in the trees? So John was starting to see things. So that's a, a manifestation of Lou body. That's a common thing where people are seeing things. And obviously you're sort of thinking, oh, no, it's quite freaky. You know, you don't know that. But what was really good was that you phoned the, the GP in Inverurie, wasn't it, and said, and they knew obviously straight away, and for people to admit that they're seeing things, you know, like stick men or you know, John would say, you know, there's a brass band. I mean, we regularly see brass bands here in Money Musk, you know, playing away, uh, you know, and you say, what other things have you seen? The World Cup final. The World Cup final. That's, that's <laughs> quite handy. That's, that's we awesome. won. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> Shouting out the window going, yay! <laughs> yeah, so, you know, t to admit to that, you know, obviously, you know, initially it was like... It's a terrible thing. Yeah. It, but people can't... It's almost like they can't admit it. You know, they don't want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's, it's embarrassment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Embarrassed in front of their family. They can't... Just get rid of all that. I think that's the main thing, you know, I would say to people that if you have a partner or somebody that you love and they're starting to see things, you know, that you're not seeing, do phone. I mean, it's a recognised symptom, these hallucinations. And then there is medication, obviously, that can help that. And you're not seeing it as badly now, are you, with the medication? Oh. This exhibition that you've got on, I mean, yeah. there's, there's been people coming in and out all the time at the moment having a look at this, and it's, it's obviously touched a chord with quite a few it's people. It's touched a chord with a lot, a lot of people all over the community here, right out to down to, well, you can hear them. Yeah. What, they're my friends. See, when you get something like this, this is when you find who your friends really are. <laughs> but it goes back to what you started talking to me about for a start. 
that you know when people have dementia the, the natural physical thing to do is to look oh, down to slump to retreat you know to withdraw to be to look as if you're embarrassed about it even yeah. if you're not embarrassed about it but you're not when I mean, you you've got your head up high and you've got the exhibition going i don't want to be the person in the corner i'm making a statement all over here that there's no recovery from this from this disease, this terrible disease. So if there's no dis- discovery from the disease, you just go for it. John Sangster there with his partner Jackie Cumberbatch. And if you're in the area, there is still just time to catch John's exhibition called Just John at the studio in Monny Musk today. Uh, the titles of the paintings are hilarious and quite, quite unbroadcastable. Oh, really? Yes. Not even one oh, of really. them? No, I mean, no. I think <laughs> Zeppelin Jobby was the easiest one. <laughs> right, it was, was it the only one that you could take a <laughs> run a risk on? But no, and it's, it's very, very interesting work. Mm-hmm. Very interesting work. You know, and I was just bowled over by the fact that he learned to paint after the diagnosis. Yes, yes. What a skill. Yeah, really extraordinary. Anyway, you're listening to Out of Doors here in BBC Radio.